Thank you for clicking on our link. We are Regina Sidilkova and Dan Wallace of the TNRD Development Services and we're here to give you a short overview of the proposed North Thompson Official Community Plan. We will focus on content that may more directly impact you. So unfortunately, we'll miss a lot of the interesting chapter content. So please go to the full approximately 100 page document plus maps to get the full story. This OCP has had first reading, which serves as our pre preliminary go ahead from the elected officials to go to you and take this for a second round of public meetings. This overview is especially for those who cannot attend our public meetings and open houses. And just to let you know, there will be, we anticipate there will be some changes before second reading and the public hearing. So what is an OCP? It is a long-term plan that sets out where a community is going and to some degree where it's coming from. It is a statutory plan, which is a fancy way of saying that certain OCP content and processes are set out and we must follow BC law. Finally, it's a document that a person may want to read and digest before investing in property and moving to a place that the plan speaks to. So now so back in uh, 2017, we developed a community survey that sought resident opinions and thoughts on a broad range of topics, including the environment, economic development, and one's thoughts on the future of the North Thompson area. This was mailed to every property owner in electoral areas A, B, and O. Over the next year, we received just over 200 completed surveys from 22 identified geographic areas within the plan area. Residents provided very poignant, thoughtful, and in some cases colorful responses to a huge range of social, environmental, economic, and political issues. The resident responses formed a large part of the new OCP's foundation and policy direction. Copies of area-specific responses or overall plan area response summaries are available from planning services. Our 2017 meetings and mem with members from uh, First Nation was our first meeting to start the OCP consultation process. This meeting was followed by community meetings in Blue River, Avola, Vavenby, Blackpool, and Little Fort over the course of 2018. In early 2019, we arranged to meet with senior high school students in Clearwater and Barrier to listen to their thoughts on the future of their communities and what they thought they would like to see going forward for plant long-range planning initiatives. During the OCP process leading up to the spring of 2020, staff also met with our o OCP advisory group on several occasions along with our Advisory Planning Commission and various federal and provincial ministry staff to review key topics. The TNRD Board of Directors has also been provided OCP progress updates over the last three years with general support being provided with the OCP development and direction. The bulk of the OCP was written over 2019, culminating in the Board providing first reading to the OCP Bylaw 2700 in December 2019. We had hoped to conduct our second round of public houses earlier in 2020. However, the COVID-19 crisis put the brakes on the project for the first half of 2020. With the ability to now conduct managed and spa spaced meetings, the second round of public meetings commenced with a public open house on August 15th at Barrier Forks Regional Park. The next public open house is to be held on September 16th in Blue River. We hope to conduct additional meetings pending direction from the public health officer. Community survey and public meeting comment responses have been summarized by community. For more information on how you can acquire the summary response for your community or the whole OCP, OCP area, please contact Planning Services. Public comments will continue to be received and reviewed up until the public hearing. Any major policy changes to the OCP will be posted to our website. So um, we cannot provide a full executive summary of the document but we're going to highlight the points we think will be of particular interest and impact on you. These are also the points that created the most discussion. Um, so to begin with, Dan will share the full table of contents so you are aware of the content if there, and if there's any policy that will be of interest to you so you can go to the working document. So you may recall how the current OCPs for Avola, Clearwater, Barrier and Blue River are structured in similar fashion. 
Like many of the older and some contemporary OCPs, they are structured almost like random colored Legos stacked together with little to no connectivity or flow. There are mandatory topics that must be included in any OCP in British Columbia, including the approximate location, amount, type, and density of residential, present and future commercial, industrial, institutional, and agricultural, and recreational land uses, along with policies relating to the protection, preservation, and restoration, and enhancement of the natural environment. Beyond these mandatory requirements, an OCP can be designed in whatever manner local government wishes. Like the theme of a road trip through the plan area, as depicted in the illustration on page 3, we wanted the OCP to have flow and connectivity where we described, based on what the residents said, where they've been, where they're at, and where they're going. We wanted the OCP to be not only a policy guide, but also a document that describes the area to prospective people visiting or moving into the area. There are sections, most notably the section describing the natural environment, that the Ministry of Environment help, staff helped us write. Their expertise in areas like red and blue listed species and lakeshore protection were very helpful. The land use designations that have typically been color coded and described like future residential or highway commercial have been replaced with rural nodes and rural settlement areas, which we describe later in this presentation. This was done to encourage development to occur in existing and known locations, providing as much flexibility as possible without amending the OCP. We wish to acknowledge that the plan area is within the traditional territories of Shwetmik people, including the Simp First Nation, Little Shushwapen, and Adams Lakes Indian Bands. Our research into the area revealed that different parts of the plan area were inhabited by First Nations people 2,500 to 3,500 years before present. As such, we wanted their histories to feature prominently in Section 3, where the history of place is analyzed. We have learned from research that many locations within the plan area have social and cultural significance. A special thanks to the members from the Simp First Nation and Little Shushwap Indian Band for helping us write this section to ensure historical integrity. When we started the OCP project, Planning Services hired Urban Systems to complete some initial data collection work for the plan area, including historical population statistics. As a result of their work, one of the most striking features of this project was the changes in population for each of the electorals covered by the OCP. Given that population totals were impacted when the District of Barrier and, uh, and Clearwater were incorporated, the remaining rural areas have experienced consistent population decline since 2001. Between the census years of 2001 and 2016, the populations of electoral areas A, B, and O declined by 66%, 37%, and 60% respectively. Population decline can be attributed to a number of factors, including a shrinking primary and secondary sector, an aging population, low birth rates, and low in-migration trends. On a more broader scale, current trends reflect a general urban, rural to urban migration flow as mid to larger urban centers become more attractive to baby boomers and generations X, Y, and Z. On the flip side, Simp First Nations shows an increase in population growth, increasing population by 20% for the same time period. So now a few words about the community nodes. So we have in the OCP area, four identified community nodes. These are not incorporated as municipalities, though some of them are improvement districts. And we've taken a slightly different approach. Most official community plans go set out um, strategic land use parcel by parcel. We wanted to be a bit more flexible as, especially given the population trends that Dan identified, we, we, uh, we cannot know what the future will hold for some of these communities. Um, so we've set it out by generalities and by policy rather than mapped individual properties. The new OCP identifies two new rural settlement areas. The Wells Gray Corridor extends from the District of Clearwater's northern municipal boundary to the south to the southern boundary of Wellsgrave Park along Wellsgrave Road. Over the past 25 years, this area has been popularized by various tourism industries, along with medium to large rural residential properties. In, in addition, 
Thompson Rivers University has a small satellite campus near the park's entrance, which is used for research. The university hopes to expand their presence in the valley at some point in the future. The Blackpool Rural Residential Area extends south from the southern boundary of the District of Clearwater to the Mos Mosquito Flats area along the Yellowhead, Yellowhead Highway corridor. This area has evolved into hobby farming and rural residential area and includes some of the better classed farmlands in the upper North Thompson Valley. Policies are intended to protect the rural nature of this area and in conjunction with the fringe area policy guidelines, help prevent the premature encroachment of commercial, industrial and residential sprawl development in the district's fringe area. So now uh, two slides about development permits. We wanted to focus on these because these are new to this area. We have two development permit areas identified. So the uh, per development permit is something that um, sets out objectives for certain, um, I guess, end outcomes under the Local Government Act. Our development permit areas are for environmental reasons rather than aesthetic. We have a development permit area for riparian and watercourse protection and we also, and that riparian, that development permit area applies across the entire OCP area of electoral areas A, B, and O. But we also have four lakes identified for a setback for septic systems from the natural boundary of the lakes and those lakes are help me down it's Adams Lac de Roche Lac de Roche East Barrier Lake, East Barrier Lake and Eleanor. Eleanor Lake in Blue River so if you want more information on those the details on those please go to the link that's on the web page for this OCP area. We are proposing to amend this section of the OCP between first and second reading. And my next slide is an example of what a development permit looks like. Typically, the covering permit is only a couple pages, but the attachment in the case of a riparian area or um, streamside protection or lakeside protection that would include a report from a qualified environmental professional uh, attesting to the impacts on that shoreline of any development and the development can be a building permit for say constructing a dwelling or a deck even or a subdivision or it can be in the case of a septic field a um, a design for a septic field if that septic field is within a hundred meters of the edge of that lake so that's quite a ways it's about 300 feet 330 feet um, so attached to this permit would be the the design and the location of the septic field and the measures taken to ensure it doesn't contaminate those four lakes mentioned earlier Temporary use permits is a permit issued by the Board of Directors under the authority of the Local Government Act. A temporary use permit provides a property owner with the opportunity to either accommodate a shorter term land use activity or to assess a given use prior to considering a permanent zoning bylaw amendment. The temporary use may continue in accordance with the permit terms and conditions until expiry up to three years. A TUP may be renewed once for up to another three year term. Economic development opportunities such as industry, industrial uses or tourism related activities may be viable on a short term or seasonal basis or established on a trial basis to determine if there is likelihood of a long term success. A TUP is the most efficient, expedient and cost effective way to enable uses not allowed in the zoning bylaw. A TUP is not a replacement for a land use designation should the applicant wish to the continuation of the use beyond the TUP expiry date, an application to amend the zoning bylaw and or OCP must be submitted well in advance of expiry date to enable non-interruption of land use. The new OCP is recognized as being a temporary use permit area throughout the plan area. Examples of land uses that have become quite controversial in the region that require TUP approval include short-term rentals like Airbnb 
and the use of one's property for recreational vehicle as a dwelling unit. Alrighty. The next steps in the OCP process will be conditional on BC Health guidelines and protocols. We are hoping to have additional open houses in Little Fort and Chuchua sometime in the fall of 2020. Uh, we're planning on a public hearing in Blackpool at the Blackpool Hall later this fall or possibly early winter with the hopes of adopting the OCP bylaw in the winter of 2020. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This concludes our presentation. I'm Dan Wallace. I'm Regina Sadilkova. If you wish to discuss a or wish to discuss a topic area not covered in this presentation, then please contact Planning Services at 250-377-8673 or planning at tnrd.ca for more detailed information. All updates and key dates will continue to be posted on our website at www.tnrd.ca or social media. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.